How's it going, everyone? This is Wendo. Today, we are going to do another exciting video series in Blender. It's called CGI Compositing. Basically, we are going to use real photographs and and the CGI elements to really compose a, a composite a really good render or images uh, for for a lot of uses for commercial use and then just some cool effect simple but very clean and nice well first of all i really want to thank everyone support my channel and sub subscribers i finally hit my 1k subscribers on youtube it's only did it for uh, two months and i can see the huge support from the cg communities and the blender communities uh, especially Thank you so much. So yeah, as you can see here today, we are going to to actually show you a uh, the the entire process of how to do this uh, final image. Basically, as you can see here, these are the scenes, and I'm also going to break it down how I made these and how making things to composite the actual photograph with a CGI. Um, uh, environment and scenes as you can see here that looks terrible on the mapping but there's a certain reason for that I will show you how finally this got it done and uh, let's get started so I prepared a file into two uh, we are going to have a two videos for this entire uh, project so the part one we're going to focusing on the file preparations basically is because a lot of times people just want to know how to do it but they a lot of times beginners don't even know what is the uh, the thinking process and how to design an image how to get at the best results because a lot of time uh, work is actually done through the uh, proper planning and the designing and then actually to utilize the tool to achieve our vision and then the within the part one we are going to really talk about what is the perspective or how to match that since we are going to do composite uh, to match perspective is very important and also perspective can be quite tricky for beginners to understand then it's going to be the pro uh, project uh, I, 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 I think I, I wrote a pro project or project the uh, subject textures onto the uh, actual uh, uh, CGI models that we are going to build so that's something we are going to discuss in detail so in the part two, uh, we are going to talk about lightings and how to build the, the background and the props and, and just make the, the images look a little bit more dynamic. And then we are also going to dive into the uh, Photoshop to really show you the pr uh, process, how to make a proper composite with a final uh, retouch for that. Yeah, without further ado, uh, let's get started. So now for in this video, so we're going to focus on the part one. So let's get started. I, I cannot wait to show you guys. So first of all, it's called it's called file preparation. So basically, I want to show you what's going on here. So you see there's three images right here. Um, so this is the one that I shot with my cameras without any retouching. As you can see here, some scratches on the surface and some dust on the on the actual products but this is what it looks like uh, this is what we call the raw image that we didn't do any editings uh, but this is what it looks like and uh, it looks pretty nice but the because my camera the format or the sensor ratio was three to four which is like kind of a, like a weird uh, ratio but it's it's still usable we just need to kind of like change change the uh, the ratio a little bit in uh, Photoshop so next thing what I did is that I just kind of I want to have this 16 by 9 like this is typical what the monitors or TV monitors ratios supposed to looks like I usually do this type of a uh, this type of ratio rather than uh, 2 to 3 and you, usually when you talk about 2 to 3 is is more about the typical uh, digital LSLR and then you can have that ratio but I just prefer 16 uh, 16 by 9 so remember this ratio okay so this is what it looks like and I just expanding the uh, the 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 image in, in Photoshop like that so this is actually the final finished retouch just for that image so as you can see here everything's being cleaning up and uh, I, I I actually kind of take it out the the scratches and everything so this is actually going to be the final picture uh, frame that we are going to use and I already set this 
uh, ratios already set already uh, set up and then what I'm envision or trying to do is when I'm trying to add in some elements just on the backgrounds to make it looks like a little bit more dynamic and to having a, a sense of depth into this photo so this is the basic image that I'm going to use uh, so so this is pretty much the, the five preparations that you need to done. So you can shoot these in, uh, products in your studios or in your uh, whatever places you want to do and then retouching to the way that, oh, okay, this is just kind of like the final uh, view of what are you trying to achieve. So the next step we are going to do is called perspective match. When you think about perspective, uh, I know for for a lot of people that our perspective is something like a one point, two point, three point perspective. Well, not technically just that. It's because when you talk about the one, two, three points perspective, a lot of times people think about drawing. I don't know what your background is coming from for uh, image um, to this visual art. Uh, I came from a, a photography uh, background so I don't really know how to draw and I don't really pay attention too much on the perspective when I start holding camera when I was uh, when I was started I just start taking pictures and just feel whatever I feel is comfortable feel good to 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 do a quick snap of when I taking pictures of landscapes and this is how I developed that but in perspective for a lot of photographers or, or photographer, uh, photography beginners, they think about a perspective, they don't really know one, two, three. They just think about all the lenses, okay? The lens, what is the focal length of each camera? Because so that's, that's the thing that it, sometimes you just want to think about. Oh, so how much, uh, what kind of the, the focal lens I want to use? So for this composite, Okay, we are want, I wanted to let you guys know how to understand the perspective. So this is called one point perspective because we have a vantage points. So everything kind of merged to that. We have a, a, a just very simple uh, horizon line and then right here and this is called one. This is the two perspective because it has two uh, vanishing points. So you can see drawing the line actually even there. Sometimes you can even actually crop that image. Just, you don't see they are going to end within the pictures. And this is the three point perspective. The reason why I'm using this kind of drawing to have a three, a three point perspective, because usually uh, we, sometimes here's one, two, three points, a vanish point. Usually when you are photographers and when you're taking pictures and then you're taking, you are standing in front of this building, you're taking a picture of this build, giant buildings, you feel very impressive. And then the pictures look kind of come out of this. Uh, why why is it so hard to to finding these pictures like online like that? Because this type of look is considered non professional in architecture uh, photography. It's just simply because this is have this is called a stone effect. So basically, if the bottom part is too big and the top part too small. It doesn't really. Uh, make the building looks good and uh, it just it's just the way that in photography world that we don't often to do that well however in drawings yeah sometimes people just utilize this to to give you a sense of like a uh, big tall building strong effect but in the photography world we don't do that so that's a lot of time that oh people don't really understand what is a three-point perspective for photographers so usually there was another special lens it's called tilt and shift uh, so if you're not really into photography, you will understand uh, how to do uh, how why we're having that type of lens because we want uh, uh, to uh, to really mimic this type of a, a look in the product uh, in in the uh, photography world. So these are the very common perspective. And so go back to the image that we had. So can you tell me what is the what type of perspective is is this image going to be? Oh, yeah, it's actually one point perspective. So it's like this. It's just one simple uh, horizon line and the, you don't see the vantage point. Well, simply because we kind of zoom in, everything is too nice and clean. Basically, if you're thinking about a plane right here, so the plane actually is gonna point, edges of the plane actually going to, to merge to one point right here. So this is actually a one point perspective, and which is also a relatively easy uh, perspective 
uh, a composite that we want to do. So in the future videos, I'm going to, to show you how to do two point perspective uh, when you do a compositing. Okay, cool. So we get the perspective, uh, uh, a basic knowledge of that sorted out. I know it's kind of like I've been talking to a uh, talking for a while, but without knowing this knowledge, you wouldn't do really truly understand why you do compositing, how to make it looks very realistic and easy to match. Okay, so well, let's go back to here. We are going to start with a camera. So we're gonna hit Shift A to add a camera right here, and then we are going to tap the zero on the number pad key. Uh, so we'll go back to zero and we are actually going to enable the shortcut key for you guys to show you what's going on here okay so now this is like a simple just a, a camera views already in here so a lot of times like people don't really understand too much about the cameras they're just setting up thanks to oh the bigger aperture is going to be is looks better and but because my um, start uh, I'm having a photography background so we wanted to really understand that what's the focal lens the focal lens is basically is what the camera lens that you use I know why shooting this my images was actually using a 95 a millimeter so Remember this a lot of times when you do compositing without shooting or without knowing the focal lens it has a it's going to Majorly impact your perspective or the distortion of your image So if you you know what is the focal lens that you use to for your images that that would be the best So what I, I can do I just type up I simply type 95 so that that's just set in stone the next thing i wanted to do is well, i'm actually going to add a background image to your camera uh, hopefully you i i know probably sometimes you never do this but this is more like a front overlay uh image that projects the stuff in front of the camera so what we can do we can here we can just add an image so uh here image okay hit open so i'm if i'm go back to the uh, project I, uh, I believe it's in here in tube and we are going to have our CGI compositing what we are going to do is actually we are using the non edit uh, image because we can see the perspective or the horizon line right here because retouch the one is actually that everything's gone so that would be easier when I building the scene well to using that so I just gonna hit that the background okay so we have this perfectly uh, so as you can see here, we have the opacity. We can adjusting how clear is this thing is. So I think I can leave it there in uh, uh, 0.6. So without doing anything, if I can go back to scene, yeah, nothing, nothing's in there. But if you type zero on the number pad key, so I can see here, this is the image. So what I want to do next, I'm basically want to build the scene using this uh, camera image uh, at the front. So actually, I can properly line up with this what I do so let's go back here uh, so I'm going to select this camera and hit Y and to kind of move it back to here and Y and we can just start building a adding another plane to start doing things so we're gonna do shift a to adding a plane right here uh, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to the shading tab just add a, 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 uh, a general HDRI image. So you see here, here is the world. I'm gonna click that and hit Control T. And this is uh, using the the node regular add-on. Um, you can you can actually quickly adding a image textures on that. Uh, if you don't know how to open it up on the re uh, node regular add-on, you can actually go to the the editing edit tab. That you can add it on. So I'm not gonna go too much detail with that. So we we'll go to the HDRI that you have. I have a lot of HDRI going on here, so I can just randomly pick one that is possible, usable. And if I hit the render view preview, so I can see, 
you can see here so we have some general lighting it's not going to be due to be our final lighting but it's just something that uh, i don't need to worry about at this moment and also the background is kind of annoying i don't want it to see all these details for, for in the hdri so i can go to the film to go to the transparent so i check this on then everything will be gone if i go to the head number zero on the pat key i go back to the to the camera view again so now um right now in the camera view i don't see the plane so i'm going to kind of select the plane make it bigger and to kind of just adjusting that now you can see here oh the plane is right here so i just need to really just kind of like drag it down here to kind of to match that as you can see here in this in this image this actually items is sitting on the surface like this but my plane because why shoot it that is i know it's pretty much like this but i is actually ended because though i have a certain limitation for my plane the how big is it is actually uh, finished ended in this line here so it's not really exactly this one supposed to go up here it doesn't match so i just want to make sure that oh so this is pretty much closed so i'm actually going to make this thing way bigger it's just a starting point so oh so roughly you can have oh this is the plane that uh, we are going to use okay and the next thing we are going to do is is we are going to build a rough uh, shape of this product and then we're going to project this image as a texture to the the rough models that we we, we are going to make so next thing we're going to do go back to the solid mode we're going to add a cylinder shift a adding a cylinder so this is is not really like a modeling it's just kind of like to getting a, a very big and broad general shape of this actual subject so let's go that go to the alt z actor mode select the entire thing hit z a uh, g and grab it down here and then you can see here what we can do here we're gonna hit control b to bevel that just make it look a little bit softer on the edge and then we are going to come up here in here okay so we're going to continue model that so it's it's just for a rough outline and after select here i can hit s uh, e s and the scale up and e z and e z and scale it down a little bit and control B to bevel that grab it and Z okay now we can actually see what's going on here so this is pretty rough man this is not a modeling at all because you see the, the actual product has a lot of details with it for my my modeling sucks <laughs> you know but this is on purpose so i'm just trying to getting a, a basic shape of that so what i can do here next i'm gonna hit control uh, 2 to adding a subsurface modifier so you know uh, control 2 to have two levels of it and then i'm actually going to adding another uh, loop cut if i just try to be to be a little bit better but you don't have to do that so next thing are going to be a shift uh, a right click and do shade smooth so we have a very basic items in here so what is the point of having these so so next thing what i'm going to do is my, I'm, we are going to have to project a textures onto the thing so we don't need to do all these detailed modeling and do the color changing everything just to match that we can just project the image on that let me show you how to do that and uh, here's add um, another modifier it's called a ue project and and then here we are going to select our object it's basically it's our camera because we are going to project an image through our camera and onto the subject Okay, so now after I click the, the the camera, still nothing showing on here. If I go to the render view, uh, so it's still kind of like simple plane 
uh, and the object. There's nothing going on there. And a couple of things that we are still no noticing that uh, we want to fix is, is this thing actually the floating on the surface? Uh, this is not what we want. So which means we are actually going to to move this plane up a little bit in order to kind of like to getting uh, this subject sitting on the on the on the surface so do some G and Z to kind of up a little bit okay cool so let me see to the back here it's a much better okay okay so that's that's a good fix and the next thing is that yeah, window. We still don't see anything on here yet. So that's in what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this cylinder. This is the, the uh, subject. We are going to hit new, adding a new textures. Uh, but we don't need to do uh, to using this principal PSDF. We're going to hit X to delete it. We are just going to add a image texture. Okay, and hook that. And the next thing we are going to do, we are going to open up image textures that we want to use so this time uh, I'm actually I can use the let's go to the YouTube uh, folders we can actually just utilizing the retouched one uh, so this is the clean one so hit hit open image now you can see something is going on here yeah right it's, it's something kind of get a projected as the image project a texture project through the camera view to the subject and then this is what it looks like all right but yeah I, I have to hate to say this but this looks terrible <laughs> it was simply because remember the ratio we have our image project it was 16 by 9 right so if we we change our uh, uh, aspect ratio so you go to the 16 So now it's matched, right? It's matched pretty well, and there is some minor shifting on the uh, on the subject, but we can actually do that just manually changing the the the, the actual cylinders. It's just just because when I was doing the final retouching for my image, it has I think I probably moved the position to the center a little bit, so it's not a big deal. So we can hit G and Z. Uh, X to grab it so I can as you can see here this is the image right whatever is getting uh, in into that is getting projected by with the with actual texture so this is how things work so we can grab that and just kind of roughly match that and then you can see here the top of the stuff is kind of cutting off so we can actually select the entire thing we can hit, uh, hit a, a G and Z to grab it make it a little bit taller to show the whole thing right we can adjusting all these so now as you can see here we have a a semi projected images on there I know they are not really details on that but remember we are trying to use a composite we are the final stuff final scene after we adding all these ribbons floating on we are going to use the final image which is going to be very nice and sharp uh, to to eventually having all that type of uh, details going on there so we are not using a, a 3d model the reason we we built this subject we just have want to have a have a really nice 3d reference in the in our blender so we can actually do a quite a bit of stuff around this okay so we can actually let's see if we if we truly covered a whole thing through our let's see put in here grab G and Z we can actually have it yeah so this is the bottom part of this items so we're gonna put it up here yeah so I think this is looking good and then in the next videos I'm actually going to the uh, going in depth about all these items that we wanted to to discuss and that we're trying to build in the 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 actual lighting the, uh, the background and props and then the post-processing 
Okay. Well, hopefully this video is very helpful. Uh, I I am I'm, I'm a, a really thrilled by all the support from you guys, and um, you know, at the same time, so I want to actually producing more high quality content to help you guys to to know the, the my process and how to build good renders and a composite image in, in my channel. All right, thank you so much, and I will see you in the next video. <laughs> Bye.